Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to the online worship service of Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. My name's Amanda. I'm the Next Gen Pastor here, and I'm excited to welcome you to our online service. It has been such a fun month here at PRPC, and we don't want you to miss out on any of it. So the best way to get better connected is to subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram or Facebook, we are at Park Ridge Presby, or head over to our website, parkridgepresby.org slash get connected. There you can fill out the I'm new here form, sign up for our weekly newsletter, then you won't miss out on any of the great opportunities that we have for you, for your family, um, to explore your faith here at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. We are in a message series called Raising Kids and Pastor Josh is gonna bring you week three of that message series. We're talking about raising kids because we are all raising kids together. Whether you are a parent, a grandparent, a coach, a teacher, a small group leader, we are in this together and we want what is God's best for the next generation. So we're glad that you are here for that message series. We're gonna have some time of worship and a time of prayer, and we hope that this service helps your faith make a difference for you every day. Let me pray for us and we'll worship together. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and we ask that you would speak to us through this time of worship. Whether we are raising kids in our homes or thinking about that time when we were kids being raised, God, we ask that you would um, open our hearts and our minds to hear something new from you in this conversation. God, maybe even an invitation from you in this conversation. God, we pray for all those who are just taking first steps in a faith journey, and we pray that you would continue to lead them faithfully. And God, if it's your will, we ask that you would let this service and this church be a part of that leading. We pray this in your son's precious name. Amen.
Well, there are many struggles in our world today, but there are several struggles that have become really intense and have become of epidemic proportions. We have these struggles of isolation, loneliness, and abandonment that are plaguing people today. Now, I did say epidemic and not pandemic, but reality is these are very impactful in our day and age. We know that people struggle with isolation, we know that people struggle with loneliness, and there are many people that have struggled with abandonment in our world today. Now, these things are really, truly challenges in our lives, but we wonder why, how can this be true in a world where we are better connected than ever before? And the reality is, the reason that these things are challenges is because connection does not always mean that there is community. And it's in the midst of actual community that we are able to find what we need to combat isolation and loneliness and abandonment. Now, what we hope for is that there are many kinds of communities in our lives that can provide this for us. But there's also one particular group of people who absolutely can be and should be providing the kind of community that combats these epidemics. And that's the community of Jesus followers. Now, if you're watching this message or listening to this, you'll know that we are a part of a church that is a community of Jesus followers. And in that way, we want to be part of coming up with these solutions. We want to be part of making sure that everybody has a community for them. That we want to be a community of Jesus followers that is a local church that is making an impact and helping these things become less and less problems for our world today. Now, in particular, there's a group of people who are really struggling with these things, having that community that can be of impact to them, and that's kids today. Now, people of all ages are struggling with these things, but kids in particular are really struggling with loneliness and isolation and abandonment. And as a community of followers of Jesus, we want to make sure that we are helping to raise kids who are able to know that there's a community for them and a community that supports them. Now, if you are raising kids directly in your life, whether you're a parent or an active grandparent, then you are feeling this tension, I know. If you are part of our church or part of a church, then you are directly impacting kids. If you're a coach, a teacher, a mentor, a boss, a supervisor, especially if you're one of those wonderful people who are providing first-time employment for kids, then you all care about this, and we should care about this together. And in particular, we all want to be raising kids who are able to know certain things. They want to know who they are. They want to have a sense of their identity and sense of who they are growing up to be. We want to make sure they know where they belong. And we want to make sure that they know they can make a difference. And as a church, as a community of faith, we can really make a difference in this because everybody, but especially kids, are talking about these three big questions in their lives. Now we've been unpacking the three big questions for all of us these last couple weeks. And we're looking at the second one and we're gonna to get to what that is in just a second. But I wanna remind us that while these questions are burning hot for teenagers, for adolescents, they crop up for all of us in different times of transition. These are the kinds of questions that we ask when we're in a midlife crisis. These are the kinds of questions that crop up when we're facing retirement. Anytime there is a change in relationship status, we, we find ourselves asking these questions. But they are so important, especially when we're asking them for the first time in our lives, which happens when we're younger, what happens when we're in our adolescent years. And those big questions are these, right? Who am I? Where do I fit in? And what difference do I make? And as a follower of Jesus, who's hopefully a part of a local church, probably our church, we want to be able to ask these questions with teenagers and help them have real answers. And in particular, we want to make sure that they can answer this question, where do I fit in? Because if you don't have an answer to this question, you are going to be falling prey to those challenges of loneliness, isolation, and abandonment. And when we are asking that question, where do I fit in? We want teenagers and we want everybody to be able to answer that question with, not only do I fit in, but I belong with God's people. Now, it's important to know there's a distinction there between fitting in and belonging. And what we want teenagers and what we want people to be able to say is that I belong with God's people. And what that means for them is this, that I can be the real me and they want the real me. 
that that's the experience, that, that I want to be there, I want to be connected, and I can be the real me, and they want the real me. I don't have to fake who I am. And also importantly, it's a community where they want something for me and not just something from me. That's a real challenge for people, especially for teenagers, because so many of the groups of people in their lives really want something from them and not just something for them. Now, this challenge also extends into the sense of the difference between fitting in and belonging. And we want to make sure that teenagers and all people can say that they belong with God's people, not just that they fit in. Because there's a big difference between fitting in and belonging. Fitting in is being connected to people who you want to be with, but you have to be who they want you to be, and that's not authentic. Well, another side of this is that you have to pretend to be something that you're not in order to fit in, and they don't even care if you're there or not. That's what fitting in looks like. And we all know that fitting in is only going to get us so far. Rather, what we want to do is help people have a sense of belonging. Belonging is being in community with people who want you to be with them, and they want you to be the real you. You don't have to fake who you are. You can bring your real, authentic, sometimes messy, sometimes hurt self into relationships. And when we do that, we know there's a sense of belonging that is important for everybody. Now, understanding what this looks like is really important for us, for those of us who are followers of Jesus. Now, we get a glimpse of what this can look like in one of those earliest interactions of the first followers of Jesus. Now, one of the early followers of Jesus was a guy named Paul. And Paul and one of his friends, Silas, were going around the Mediterranean world and expanding the knowledge and the reach of Jesus. And once they had done some very important work in that immediate area of Jerusalem and Israel, they started traveling all over. And one of the places they went out to was an area where they met a woman named Lydia. Now, Lydia was not a Jew. We know that she was a person who believed in God, but she wasn't Jewish. And Paul and Silas were going around and making sure that everybody knew that they could belong to God's people. And Lydia was the kind of person that everybody wants to be a part of their church. She was a small business owner. She was a, a person who made linens. She could make purple colors, which was a big thing back then. But she was not sure if she belonged to the people of God because she knew she wasn't Jewish. Now, Paul interacts with her, Silas interacts with her, they preach the message of belonging, and she realizes that God has been speaking to her, and she realizes that she belongs to the people of God. And not only does she belong to the people of God, but her whole household could too. And she gets them all to become part of the Jesus community and become baptized believers. Now, remember that she has done all this, and she still then has this question if she belongs. She still has a wonderment if she could belong to the community of God because of the attitude, not of God, but because of the attitude of people. And she phrases it this way when she explores this with Paul. She says to him, if you have judged me faithful to the Lord, then you can stay with me. I want you to stay and have time with me. But look at what she says. It says, if you, the human, have judged me faithful, She's wondering if she belongs. She's wondering, do I have to fit in? Do I have to fake it till I make it? Or am I wonderful because God loves me? Or am I beloved because God loves me and I can belong to the community? Fortunately, Paul understands what's going on and welcomes her in. She, he says to her that you belong in this community, that you are one when you ask, where do I fit in? You can answer that question, Lydia, and say, I belong with God's people. What was true for Lydia then is true for all of us now. When we ask that question, where do I fit in? The answer is you belong with God's people. You can answer that question with confidence that you belong with God's people. And the people of God, a local church and our local church, we want to make sure that we are answering that question with everybody, that you belong with us. That you can be the person God is calling you to be. That you can be the person that you are, have been created to be. That you can be the person that you are emerging into. And that we want you to be the real you experiencing life together. So 
whether it's a, you are a teenager and growing up trying to figure out where you fit in, you belong with God's people. If you're an adult of any age trying to impact a teenager, you can tell them that you belong with God's people. Or if you're a teenager trying to help another teenager or another student or a kid understand where they fit in, you can help them answer that question. You belong with God's people because everybody belongs with God's people. God wants you to be you in a wonderful, healthy way. And we want to be in community with everyone who is willing to be their true selves, finding their way to being the person God wants them to be. It's really important that we help people answer that question. They're asking big questions. We are asking big questions. And let's answer them together that people belong to God. Well, hey, everybody, thanks again for joining us for this online service. We hope that our time together has been a blessing to you. I hope you know this, but it is a blessing to us that we can be connected to you in this way. Please know that we're here to help you in any way that a church can be of help. And if you get in touch with us, we'll be happy to help you if we can. Well, again, we hope you'll join us again next week for our online service. And until that time, please know that we're here for you and praying for you.